Hi, welcome to Jelly Brand Rail. Uh, in this video, I'll be discussing the rail freight network within Victoria. And by Victoria, I'm referring to the state of Victoria, which is in Australia. Just for a bit of context on the state itself, it um, borders with New South Wales and South Australia, and the rest of it is coastline. Um, also, just Victoria has four main areas that have ports. That includes Hastings, otherwise known as Long Island. Um, the city of Melbourne, of course, has port um, areas as well. Um, the city of Geelong has a port, and also there's a port within the town of Portland. The population of Victoria is 6.7 million people, um, and the capital city being Melbourne has a population of 5.1 million people, so obviously that city holds the majority of the people within the state. Geographically, about 50% of Victoria is used for farmland, and the main produce being beef, sheep, grains, fruits, and nuts. Victoria also has some manufacturing, um, which includes uh, processed foods and beverages, textiles and clothing, and other clothing accessories. Also wood, paper, steel, and plastic products. Also, just for a bit of context about other rail networks within the state, um, we're currently looking at the intercity or regional um, rail network. Uh, so this is operated by V-Line, which is a state government um, ran service. Um, and a lot of these corridors are also shared with the freight corridors. Um, now this map is of the Metropolitan Train Network entirely within uh, Greater Melbourne. It's quite an extensive rail network. Um, and again, some of these lines also share corridors with the freight network. Um, also, just wanted to show this map. It's the current tram network um, entirely within Melbourne. Um, so tram being the light rail network. Uh, mostly, a lot of this runs on the road. Um, it's a different gauge to the rest of the rail network. Um, and none of it shares a corridor with, with the freight network. And also, I just wanted to show another map. Here's just what the rail network looked like in Victoria in the 1930s. Um, just to give a bit of context of how it's changed over time. With the four rail maps that I've just shown, I might do separate videos on them within the future. But here is a map of the current freight network in Victoria. Um, I've actually done this map up myself. I couldn't find um, any rail freight networks that had everything I wanted to show, um, like maps. Uh, there are some out there, but um, you know some of them still include a lot of the old lines that are now redundant. Some of them were too blurry to use as well, um, and some of them only showed certain sections of the map. But yeah, there are others out there. Um, so just with this map as well, uh, we've color coded the gauges, different gauges. Um, so a lot of people do talk about Australia having a lot of different gauges for their rail um, and how convoluted that is or how difficult that is for services, understandably. But in Victoria, there is only two heavy rail gauges and that's obvious, uh, broad gauge and uh, standard gauge. The broad gauge lines on this map are in blue and the standard gauge is in yellow. Um, and the green lines are actually uh, uh, um, dual gauge. Um, in some cases, yes, yeah, dual gauge in the one line or a bit and two gauges running side by side on the same corridor. Uh, to give a bit of context on who operates these lines, or not the operator of the service, but just who maintains the line or who owns it. Um, what's colored in red is the ARTC line. So ARTC is a federal government um, organization and they look after those the rest of the state but not entirely but we're going to say majority of it is maintained by V-Line um, so that's a state government enterprise uh, there are some other parts of tracks um, particularly obviously the metropolitan area in Melbourne that's um, maintained by Metro Trains MTM and there are other sections that are under VicTrack as well, which is another state organization. So I'll go through each line um, and discuss what services are operated on them. I won't be able to discuss every single service because for two reasons. One, I don't know them all. Um, secondly, there's probably too many. And thirdly, some of them are a bit more just ad hoc uh, occasional services too. Uh, we'll just have a look at some of the main ones. <clears throat> 
Um, so starting my southeastern line, which is a Hastings line, there is a blue scope train that runs, I think it's a couple services a day in each direction. Um, and they travel from Long Island all the way to the South Dinon Rail Yards. Um, that's all on a broad gauge and it shares most of the line um, with the MTM service, one being um, the Stony Point line before it joins up with the Frankston line, goes through the city over the viaduct between Southern Cross and Flinders Street Station and then further north to the um, rail yard. Um, looking at the next line, now this is the Bansdale line, um, or I'm going to refer to it as the Bansdale line, you could call it the Gippsland line or the um, Traralgon line or um, the freight services that run on here all come from different locations as well. Um, the main one being the Mary Vale paper train. <clears throat> um, so it's a paper train that carries obviously paper and it travels from a town called Mary Vale and then it heads down, um, it's a branch off line from the Bansdale line. It joins, it'll join back up at Bansdale and the Morwell line. Um, and then that runs all the way to the port of Melbourne. And that's all broad gauge as well. Um, on this line, we also have um, traveling between Dandenong and the port of Melbourne is the cement trains that come from the cement um, manufacturers in um, Dandenong. I believe these operate one service each direction each day. Um, it's all uh, broad gauge and it obviously shares a path with um, the Dandenong and Pakenham corridor or the Pakenham and Cranbourne corridor all the way into the city. Then the next line we have is, um, oh it's still the same line but the next service we have is the Kilmore East Quarry Train. These travel from Westall on the, um, in the Caulfield corridor. Um, and they will travel all the way up to Kilmore in the north, which is on the next line that we'll discuss as well. These are broad gauge as well. <clears throat> um, it shares a corridor with the Danny Long and Cranbourne trains as well as the Seymour Shep line too. Um, so just to add, um, the services I've discussed so far are all operated by Cube. Um, the Cube is one of the freight operators within um, Australia. So Kilmore itself is on the next corridor, which I'm going to call the Albury Corridor. Um, the Albury Corridor operates V-Line services to Albury um, and also the Melbourne to Sydney passenger service as well. Um, the freight service, regular freight service from this corridor is ran by um, another operator, Pacific National, and they run trains from Griffith, in, in New South Wales, all the way to the port of Melbourne. Um, there are also other inter, interstate services that run through this corridor as well, but I am not so familiar with them. If anyone knows, please comment below. Uh, the next line is a branch off uh, standard gauge line as well to Oaklands. Um, there's no regular services that I'm familiar with on this line, but it's still in operation for ad hoc grain and produce trains. And the next line here is the Tucumwall container, or the Tucumwall line. Um, so Pacific National, which is another freight operator, they um, run trains from Tucumwall to um, the port of Melbourne. I believe it's about four or five times a week return services. And, um, and these run on the broad gauge line. Um, there's also another operator called Southern Short Haul Railway or SSR. Um, who run trains for Allied Pinnacle, their customer, um, from Tucum Wall as well. Um, I think they're more ad hoc and they, they can come from different locations as well. <clears throat> One of them being our next line, which is a Daniloquin line. So Daniloquin line also operates these SSR um, grain trains as well. But also um, there's the Daniloquin containers, um, which is the Sunrise train. So Sunrise is a very popular um, grain and dried fruit company here in Australia. I'm not sure if they're known as well overseas as they are in Australia. Um, these trains are operated by Cube. They travel from Daniloquin to the port of Melbourne. Um, they're quite regular services. I think they service about three or four times a week on the Daniloquin corridor. Um, so before I move on to the next line, um, I'll discuss a branch off line that runs between the Tucumwall line and the Daniloquin line. It's been decommissioned for, I'm not sure how long, 
but they do plan to reopen it from my understanding. Um, but if anyone knows more about that than myself, let me know. If this corridor or if this little branch between the two lines is reopened, it just gives another option um, when there's disruptions on one of those lines. And with all the infrastructure projects happening at the moment, there's a lot of disruptions on both of those lines. Uh, the next line is the Swan Hill line or the PM Gill line, however you want to refer it to it. Um, SSR run ad hoc grain services from here. Um, they, are, they share the line corridor with the Swan Hill service, which meets up with more trains, passenger trains at Bendigo, and they travel down um, to Melbourne on the broad gauge. The next line is the Menangatang line. Uh, from Menangatang, there are some grain trains operated um, between the Kensington Grain Sidings and Menangatang by SSR. And there's also regular trains between Ultima on this line, Ultima and the Port of Melbourne. Um, the customer is Pentark Hay, um, and they're operated by Cube. Now these trains can go, um, actually take two different corridors between Ballarat and Melbourne. So once they get from Ultima to Ballarat, um, they can then take the same corridor shared with the passenger line via Bacchus Marsh through to the Port of Melbourne, or they can go via the which is currently a freight line only between um, Ballarat and Geelong. And then they can take <coughs> the Geelong corridor into Melbourne. Uh, the next line on this one is the Sea Lake corridor. So Sea Lake um, SSR do operate ad hoc uh, Kensington grain trains and they go from Sea Lake to Kensington siding on the broad gauge. The next line is the Mildura corridor. Um, now Pacific National operate trains um, here. They go all the way from the Port of Melbourne um, via Ararat um, and then all the way to Melbourne. Um, there used to actually be a passenger corridor along here as well, once upon a time. Um, there's been a lot of advocacy to get that back, but currently it's just a freight service. It's also currently just a standard gauge line um, when it at, when it was um, a passenger service, there was also broad gauge up here as well. Um, and then there's the um, branch off line from here, which goes to Murrayville. Um, that's just currently decommissioned for um, upgrades, but will be used again for grain services um, at some point, part of the Murray Basin project, which in itself is causing a lot of disruptions to a lot of these lines that I've mentioned. Um, but they're for improvements to the rail service itself. So, um, yeah, hopefully we see some positive results once that's completed. Um, also, just the Murray um, Basin works. I might do a separate video on that. I don't think there's enough time to discuss all the projects within that um, as part of this video. The next two lines um, are just used for ad hoc grain services. These are Hoopton and Rainbow. Um, they travel on standard gauge. And the next line down is the Adelaide to Melbourne line. Um, there's regular trains operated by um, SBR Intermodal. And they operate trains from Doohan to Melbourne, to the port of Melbourne that is, um, on um, standard gauge. Um, I'm not sure if there's other freight services interstate from here, but perhaps. Um, and then the next line is the Portland Corridor, which I believe just runs ad hoc um, trains when the other ports are not available. The next line uh, on this map, and it's the last line as well, is the Warnable Corridor. Uh, Pacific National operate trains here daily. Uh, I think it's for a turn service daily. Uh, they travel on broad gauge um, all the way from Warnable to the Port of Melbourne. Um, so they share the corridor with the V-Line service from Warrnambool um, and also with the MTM service from Werribee. Um, but then this train does take the ARTC dual gauge line between Newport and Sunshine before it heads to Tottenham and then on to the port of Melbourne. Um, so that's pretty much everything on this map. One thing I did forget to mention going back to the Bandstyle line, um, I believe they're reintroducing some freight service from Bansdale all the way from Bansdale. I'm not sure who's going to operate that or what the product is or anything else about it. 
But if anyone knows, please comment below. If anyone knows of any freight services that I've also missed, please comment below. Or if there's any corrections to any of this as well. Um, so everyone, thanks for watching. Um, I hope to make further videos, particularly on the projects that are looking to improve rail freight services. I'm hoping to do those videos soon in future, as well as videos on the other rail networks within the state. Another thing I wanted to do additional video on was the um, just the rail freight lines within Melbourne itself as there's a few um, corridors including the Jakarta loop, the Sunshine loop and the way the trains get into and out of the ports and how they get into all the sidings within the city um, would be an interesting video in itself. Um, but in the interim feel free to check out my other videos they're generally about transport and infrastructure and um, again thanks for watching please like and subscribe bye